in this video I'm going to show you how to set up push notifications on your iOS device using NativeScript. To be able to test push notifications you'll need to have a real iOS device. And this is actually my phone connected to the computer. Next, you'll need to have an active developer program membership in order to communicate with the push notification service from Apple. Let's start with a fresh native script project. We'll call it native push iOS and we'll use it with Vue. And now I'm going to run the apps to make sure everything is working properly. Okay, so the project has been built and now we can see the app with the initial screen. So this initial screen is actually the home component. So we can go to our app.js file and see that Vue.js has been instantiated with the home component in it. Let's go to the component and clean up all the stuff we won't be needing. We are just going to leave the label with a text center so we don't see an empty screen and we'll say native script push. And we'll also create an empty mounted property that will later be used to fit and push notification logic. For the app to be able to receive push notifications at all, we need to enable that option in the Xcode. To open our project in Xcode, we need to go to our platforms folder and find our workspace file. In the Xcode, go to Capabilities tab and find the push notifications section. The Xcode has now added the push notifications feature to your app and also added the entitlement to your entitlements file. We need to find that entitlements file in our platforms directory. And we need to copy it to our app resources folder. Because we need that file available when our app is built on our device. Now that we have an app set up to receive push notifications, we need some way to contact Apple's push notification service to get a device token that we're going to use to actually send the notification to a device. To do that, we're going to use the plugin. The most popular plugin for native script push notifications is built to work with Firebase. But the same plugin can be set up to work without using Firebase and we're going to try to do that. First, let's install the plugin. It's asking us, are we going to use this plugin only as a push notification client for non-Firebase push service? And we're going to say yes. Are you using iOS? Yes. Android? Not in this video. Do you want to save the configuration? Yes. The plugin has been installed and now we need to update our info plist file. We're going to add this key use external push provider. This is telling our Firebase plugin that we don't want to use the Firebase and we want to use the external push provider, for example, our custom backend or some other service. And we also need to add this UI background mode property that's going to allow processing when a push notification is received while the app is in background. Now let's import the plugin. So first in the app.js we need to require the plugin. So require, do not import. This step is important so the plugin can boot along with the application. So next we're going to import messaging from native script plugin Firebase messaging into our home component. Now we have access to the messaging object that contains a method called register for push notifications. When this method is fired, it will check if the app has permission to receive push notifications. If not, this will show user a prompt and ask a user to allow an app to receive push notifications. The method receives an object that has a property on push token received callback. And that's a function that will receive a device token in a callback from the Apple push notification service. Device token is unique for the app and the device, and that's how the backend service knows which device it needs to send the notification. So in the body of this callback, we're just going to say alert and then token received with the token, so we can see the result when we allow it. Let's start the build again and see what's going to happen. Now, as we can see, the app is asking us for permission to send us push notifications. And let's allow it to see what's going to happen. And 
And yes, we are getting an alert with the device token like we want it. We're almost ready to test sending the push notifications. To be able to send push notifications, you'll need some backend service like Firebase or some, or some custom backend that you've made. Or if you don't have that, you can download an app that's built to help you test push notifications. App name is push notifications and I'll leave the link in the description below. When we open the app, we see that requires you to input your bundle ID. You can find your bundle ID by going into the project and looking under package JSON. And there you'll see native script property and you'll need the ID. So let's paste it there. Also, it requires a device token that we've seen previously in the alert. So I'm just gonna console log it so it's easier to copy into the app. And let's, let's paste that here. Next, you need to authenticate yourself to Apple push notification service. You can do that by creating a certificate or by creating an authentication key. The key is the option that Apple introduced latest and I think it's much more convenient to use. So let's head out to the Apple developer account and create a key. You can find it under the keys. So then create a key, give a name to that key. Let's say push notification key. Enable push notification service, click continue then register and download it. We're gonna download it into our temp directory. While we are here, we need to check if your app is added to the identifiers because you'll be needing that in order to send notifications. So we see it's not, so let's add the app to the identifier. So register a new identifier, app ID, bundle ID is the same as we used in the app. So we're just gonna paste it. And description is native push iOS. And just make sure you have the push notifications enabled. You don't need anything else for this demo. Click continue and register. Now that we have a key, we can add it into the app. Also it requires key ID. And that's the part of the name of the key we just downloaded. So I'm just gonna select and paste it here. And the last thing is your team ID that you can find on your developer's account. As for the body, you can see that the app has it pre-filled. So it's a custom JSON format and has a required APS property and the alert is the place where you put the texts that you want to be shown in the notification. So we're just going to update it to hello native script. And we'll leave the custom key, it doesn't matter. So I'm now going to move the device screen next to this app so we can have a better view. So I'm going to exit the app and lock the phone. Let's see what's gonna happen when we hit send. And it says succeeded and we can see hello native script. And let's update the text to hello again, just to make sure it works. So sending again, and it says hello again. And when I click on the push notification, it redirects us to our native script push app. And yeah, it works. And that's it, we have successfully received a notification. So as you can see, when you finish all the config in the Xcode and the Apple developer account, receiving notifications in native script is really simple. And this was just for iOS devices. In the other videos, you can find the Android version and some of the advanced actions that you can do with push notifications on your iOS device. Stay tuned.